I know we're not uh, quite into spring time because it's just barely oh, February, but um, away place I have this nice fluffy stack that we're going to just go ahead and talk about anyway. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, and welcome if you are new. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about what I would like to try to read during springtime, which is very soon. It's almost February. we got one more day left of January, so pre-filming. We love that here, usually. Alright, so we are going to be talking about what books I would l hopefully like to get to in springtime because I have a list for spring reading and then I have, if I can get the pages to work, please hold while we get things together. <laughs> And then I also have a summer reading list. I have a Halloween reading list, which I don't have a fall one because I have my Halloween one and my Halloween one lasts from September through October. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Right now, we're just gonna talk about the spring stack behind me because like I said, they're light and fluffy reads. Or at least I'm hoping they seem that way. Because when I looked at them, I was like, hmm. Kind of did that on purpose, but, uh, <laughs> didn't mean to. But that's how it happened, you know? So, oh, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about these books I would hopefully like to get to during springtime. So, the first one... I want to try to get into is the filled the fill in boyfriend by Casey West. I I think I've read one Casey West book, but I can't remember the top of my head. Yes, I read Lucky and Love. That's the one I read. Okay. Wow. That just we're moving on from that. But anyway, like I said, I would like to read the fill-in boyfriend by her. And I'm going to give a description on what this book is about to you guys. When Gia Montgomery's boyfriend Bradley dumps her in the parking lot of her high school prom, she has to think fast. After all, she's been telling her friends about him for months now. This was supposed to be the night she proved he existed. So when she sees a cute guy waiting to pick up his sister, she enlists his help. The task is simple to the task is simple. Be her fill-in boyfriend. Two hours, zero commitment, a few white lies. After that, she can win back the real Bradley. The problem is that the days after prom is not the real Bradley she's thinking about, but the stand-in. The one whose name she doesn't even know, but tracking him down doesn't mean they're done faking a relationship. Gia owes him a favor, and his sister intends to see that he collects. His ex-girlfriend's graduation party, three hours, zero commitment. A few white lies. Just when Gia begins to wonder if she could turn her fake boyfriend into a real one, Bradley comes waltzing back into her life, exposing her lie and threatening to destroy her friendships and her newfound relationship. That kind of sounds good, and it also gives me the vibes of two olive boys I loved before and we might enjoy this quite a bit. 
Alright. The next one, I have my books all out of order, so I apologize. The next one I want to try to get to is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. Basically, it's a boy meets boy, and it's a cute graphic novel I've heard nothing of but good things about. But like I said, it says, a boy meets boy, boys become friends, boys fall in love. And that's all it is giving me this description for. But like I said, I've heard really good things about this, and it's a cute read, and we're going to be all about cute reads for in spring, so like it so much. So, we're going to move on from Heart Stop at Volume 1. So after I read this and I like it, I can go and get 2 and 3 because Volume 3 comes out this year, and yay! Alright, the next one we're going to talk about is Adorkable by Cookie O'Gorman. Who wants a real boyfriend when faking it is so much fun? Apparently we like the fake relationships because again, that's what also happened into All the Boys I Loved Before and I'm obsessed with that series. And the fact that I found two other books that kind of go along in that category. It's not a coincidence. It's just how it happens. But anyway, adorkable. Adorkable. Descriptive term meaning to be equal parts dorky and adorable. For reference, see Sally Spritz. 17-year-old Sally Spritz is done with dating, or at least she's done with the horrible blind date slash hookup slash sneak attacks her matchmaking bestie hooker sets her up on. There's only so much one geek girl and Gryffindor supporter can take. The fact that on the back of it she's got her Harry Potter vibe set onto it, okay. We're gonna roll with it. But just so you know, I'm not Gryffindor. I think I'm more of a Ravenclaw. Anyway, I know that was a cat, but moving on. Her solution? She needs a fake boyfriend and fast. Enter Beck soccer phenomenon all around hottie and Sally's best friend practically sends birth. When Sally asks Beck to be her Fake boyfriend, Becky is, Bex is only too happy to be used. He'd do anything for Sal, even if that means giving her PDA lessons in his bedroom and saying she's more than pretty and expertly kissing her at parties. The problem is Sally's been in love with Bex all her life and he's completely clueless. This book struggles, or this book's... This book features two best friends, one special edition Yoda Snuggy, countless beneath the ear kisses and begs the question, who wants a real boyfriend when faking can be so much more fun? And that is adorkable. Alrighty, let's see. The next one... I would like to get to is Would Like to Meet by Rachel Winters. Can you fall in love like they do in the movies? It's Evie's summer shop to find out because if she can't convince her film agency's biggest client Ezra Chester to write the romantic comedy screenplay he owes producers, her career will be over. The catch? He thinks rom-coms are unrealistic and he'll and he'll only put pen to paper if Evie shows him that it's possible to meet a man in real life the way it happens on the big screen. Critical Evie might not believe in happily ever after, but 
She'll do what it takes to save the job that's been her lifeline, even if it's, even if it means reenacting iconic rom-com scenes in public. Spilling orange shoes on a cute stranger? No problem. Leaving her number in books all over London to see who calls? Done. With a little help from her well-meaning friends and Ben and Anna Neat, the adorable father-daughter duo who keep witnessing her humiliations, Evie is determined to prove she can meet a man the way Sally met Harry. But... Can a workaholic who's given up on love find a meet cute of her very own? Like, that sounds super good. Like, that description alone sounds like it could be a, like, a short movie, and I would enjoy it. But let's hope I enjoy the book. But like I said, it sounds really good. Again, you like sensing the theme here? Alright, the other one is another Casey West book. I, like I said, I've only read one so far of hers, but I have so many of them. But the other one I would like to try to get to is P.S. I Like You. Signed, sealed, delivered. While spacing out in chemistry class, Lily scribbles some of her favorite song lyrics onto her desk. The next day, she finds that someone has continued the lyrics on the desk and added a message to her. Intrigue. Soon, Lily and her anonymous pen pal are exchanging full-on letters, sharing secrets, recommending bands, and opening up to each other. Lily realizes she's kind of falling for this letter writer. Only, who is he? As Lily attempts to unravel the mystery and juggle school, friends, crushes, and her crazy family, she discovers that matters of the heart can't always be spelled out. Casey West brings the irresistible wit, warmth, and sparkle to this spoon-worthy story of love showing up when and where you least expect it. And that is a P.S. I Still Like You. Like I said, some of these books are cute and fluffy spring reading. So it kind of gets like the perfect summer vibe get you going, if that makes sense. So that's where that goes. Alright, and then the next book I'm going to try to get into is uh, Play Me by... Ruby L. Laura Ruby. <laughs> I had to look for the name because it was on a library book sale and they tend to cover up the first name. So I had to find that. But it sounds really good. Eddie knows how to play the game. He is, after all, the writer, director, and cameraman, the mastermind, really behind the hit online TV show. Riot Girl 16. When it wins a contest to be aired on MTV, and it obviously will, have you seen the competition? He'll be famous. Then there's the game of love. Eddie knows all the tricks, and his favorite girls are the ones with the fishnets and cherry lipstick and legs up to there. The, old, the ones who know he doesn't make any promises. The ones who are cool with it. But as graduation looms, everything and everyone starts desabotating from Eddie's master script. Never in a million years did he accept to be facing off again with the unapproachable, perfect, listen to Duelk. For once in his life, he's not in control, and to be with Lucinda, he is willing to get swept up in the game, but what happens to a player when the rules suddenly change? Can Eddie find a way to win it all, or will he get played? Hmm. 
my guess is he might get played. We don't know for sure, but that's what it's sounding like, you know? Why are we flashing camera? Ugh. Oh. You know, the joys of filming and then your camera battery is flashing. And I have three books left. Can we wait, camera? Real quick, I'm going to give a description for The Wedding Party by Jasmine Glory, if I can. The new exhilarating romance from the writer Cal claimed as one of the most exciting yeah, we're gonna move past that Maddie and Theo have two things in common one Alexa is their best friend two they hate each other after an oops we made a mistake night together neither one can stop thinking about the other with Alexia's wedding rapidly approaching Maddie and Theo are Maddie and Theo both share a bridal party of responsibilities that require more interaction with each other than they're comfortable with. Underneath the sharp barbs they toss at each other is a skimmering att attraction that won't fade. It builds until they find themselves sneaking off together to release some intention when Alexia isn't looking. Agreeing they'll end it once the wedding is over. When the wedding date is suddenly pushed up and they have a few months left of secret renunzo of us, they find themselves disappointed that the end is near. Two people this different can't possibly have a connection other than purely the physical, right? But as with any engagement with a nemesis, there are unspoken rules that must be abided by. First and foremost, don't fall in love. That sounds super good, and from what I've seen on Goodreads, I think this is like the third book. Hopefully I don't have to read the first two before I can get to this one, but if that's the case, I'm going to try to get the first two and then read this one. So there's that little fun fact. And the camera battery hasn't died on me yet. Anyway, <laughs> the uh, other book I would like to get into is Frankly in Love by David Yoon. I'm just going to read the back real quick because like I said, the camera battery is flashing. And I don't know where it's going to cut me off on. So hopefully this video is okay. A little scared. But... Two friends, one fake dating scheme, what could possibly go wrong? And again, do you see my theme that's going on here? Some fake dating books. We're okay with, we're okay with that trip. And then the last and final book I would hopefully like to get to is Broken Beautiful Hearts by Cami Garcia. She is one of the co-authors that wrote the Beautiful Creature series. I read that way back in 2013 and I was obsessed with that series and oh, anything I see that has her name on it I tend to try to pick up her other books to read but when star soccer player Peyton Rios receives an offer from her first college from her first choice college her senior year starts off exactly as planned, until she uncovers her boyfriend's dark secret. Peyton confronts him and finds herself falling down a flight of stairs. Her knee and possibly her dream of going pro is shattered. Everyone at school is talking. Was she pushed or did she fall? Peyton knows the truth. Even if no one believes her, when her future on the line, Peyton goes to stay with her uncle in a small town, Tennessee, in a small town, Tennessee town, to focus on her recovery. That's where she meets Owen. A year ago, Owen's law's life changed and he doesn't want anyone to know why. Until he meets the new girl in town, but dating is off the table for Peyton. Even for a guy as sweet and sexy as Owen, he tries to chip away at her walls, but 
Peyton senses that he's hiding something and she's afraid to trust her own heart when their secrets are finally exposed. Peyton has to decide if love is worth fighting for. And that is a Broken Beautiful Hearts. And there you guys have it. That is what I want to try to plan on reading for in springtime. I don't know if I'll get to all these books. It would be nice to get to all the books because they sound so good and I'm here for it. So if you guys are new here, go ahead and hit that subscription if you haven't already. And hit the notification bell for when I post more videos because I try to do that frequently when camera battery is not flashing up in the corner. So far the video is still live so we like that trope. But anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day or night and of course get some unexpected reading in because why not. And that is all for today's video and I will see you guys in a new one soon. Alright, goodbye.